but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think it's fine. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just... being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Qianwei, that was a bit uncalled for. And Mingbo cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs from the guild nearby? Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, it would be better than nothing. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Mm-hmm. We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages. Current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. These are the reports they submitted. Wow! One of them is really thick! It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. There's still some time. Have a skim through, get a first impression of what each person's proposing. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done. Finished, huh? What did you think? Everyone took it very seriously. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tianshu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Yes, ma'am. Oh? So you two are the assessment officers, are you? I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be assessing us in person. I certainly hadn't imagined I'd be seeing two entirely unfamiliar faces. I trust you've read through my manifesto? I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience in mind, after all. Mind your tone, mister! Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was simply stating a fact. Cloud Retainer? You know this Adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that people are constantly talking about. With your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Yeah, although I shouldn't get my hopes up. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh, 
Mingbo, I work in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've worked there for um nine years, five months, and three days. In that time, I've handled uh, 2,347 cases. I have 12 active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in uh, 16 days. My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for uh, auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts to the accounts, namely... Uh, is it just Paimon, or is he not very good at public speaking? You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some question. Hello. <laughs> not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope, but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put your plan into action? Very fair question. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself, and my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. Of course, two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways, and you might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? A great question. Well, I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the UAHI Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Post-implementation, it would all come down to the results. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. Hmm. Nice answer. All right, next question. He seems like a great guy. Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure to listen to. Here's my take on what we just learned. As you saw, Chen Wei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Mingbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. But he and Chen Wei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Perfect summary! Paimon couldn't agree more! You're good at this, Yewan. Last but not least, Jur E. His manifesto is full of pertinent details, his methodology is sound, and his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. But, what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle Tian. Let's go back and report to Uncle Tian. see. Then it's more or less as I anticipated. All right. Then let me ask this. The ideas in Jury's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Oh. I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list of candidates. For fear of affecting your judgment. But 
I can tell you now. Those three candidates have all studied under me in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. But Xin Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Bo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Of all of them, Shiri was with me for the longest duration. Wow! So how did you get to know them all, Uncle Tian? Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend. Ming Bo came to my attention in the course of my work, and <laughs> as for Jiri, that <laughs> uh, was pure happenstance. We first met while fishing. Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. Jury came from a poor family, and his parents died when he was very young. But he was a gifted student and a fast learner. He reminded me of a younger version of myself. So I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and noticed how quickly he got on. Quite. And now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking. The young are growing up, and I am growing old. How time flies. No one can escape the cycle of life. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It, it just means I finally have a good reason to retire and spend my days doing what old men like me should be doing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Sounds like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. <laughs> Ooh, and freshly caught fish? Ah, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. Fresh fish soup. Mmm, sounds tasty. Doesn't it? <laughs> also, some time ago, Jury purchased a very special recipe from an old fisherman. When we've been fishing recently, Jury always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Oh, the addition of these makes the soup taste even more wonderful. That flavor makes for a fond memory. But at my age, <laughs> Who knows how many more chances I have left to taste it again. Oh, can Paimon come next time too? Paimon really wants to try it. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, we've reported back. Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations and make your final decision only after a thorough review of each candidate's talents and capabilities. Remember, you must be thorough. Right? His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Easy. Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. For example... Wen Yuan, 
Shanghua. Yes? Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? Did they scare you? These two are Wenyan and Shanghua. They work for me. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. They also perform various assignments as required. Shanghua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wenyuan relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. Is he all right? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. Shanghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qianwei's background. Wenyuan? Go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingbo's work files. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma um, so what about Juri? Juri? Well, obviously, as the most promising candidate, we will be investigating him ourselves. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. If we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Bu Lai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. <laughs> 